thank you so much, Denise Burnham, for taking some time to meet with us here this morning. I know the last 24 hours have probably been a whirlwind finally getting to announce that you were selected by NASA as an astronaut candidate. Uh, what's that been like now getting to share that secret and kind of the world knowing? It's been pretty surreal. I feel like I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm so honored uh, to have been selected and get to serve alongside these really incredible uh, teammates I'm going to have. So where were you and what were you doing when you got that call? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I live in Wasilla, Alaska, but I'm in the Navy Reserves and I drill out of uh, Alameda in California. And my mom happens to live there in California as well. So uh, I was at my mom's house. It was really early in the West Coast. Um, I'm not sure if you saw my bio, but I am oil and gas. So for uh, me to get a call from a Houston area code, it's not abnormal for me. So I'm thinking like, could this be it? But when I heard the chief of the astronaut office's voice on the line, I was holding my breath. Uh, I definitely got super emotional. It's a childhood dream of mine uh, to be a NASA astronaut. So uh, I, you know, I did a little bit of crying, a little bit of laughing. <laughs> Absolutely. So what made you want to be an astronaut? I know you mentioned in the announcement, you know, it's been since a kid. What first got you interested in STEM? Sure. Um, so my grandfather and family in general had a big role in influencing me. Um, my grandfather loves telescopes and uh, just astronomy in general, and uh, he's kind of self-taught. And so getting to kind of see like Mars and like the rings of Saturn, like the size of your pinky nail, uh, you know, in the backyard telescopes, it really touched my heart differently. Um, so I've always been curious about it. I, I was a NASA intern as well. So I've always had that desire too. <laughs> yeah, it definitely changes it when it feels that tangible when you can see it from your home. Absolutely. Who are the heroes that influenced and directed your path? You mentioned your grandfather. Yeah, you know, I'm super close with my family, so I uh, always have to uh, be very grateful that um, even though I'm not coming from this family of like scientists and engineers, um, nobody ever told me no, like that it's impossible. They always kind of were the opposite, like dream big. It's okay, you know, set yourself some goals, pursue what you're interested in, and you'll excel at it. It's, it's. Uh, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but it's, it's true. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, we started this channel a year ago and I wouldn't imagine be sitting here talking to you guys today. So it's, you know, take that risk. You never know what's going to happen. 100% you know, agree with you. Over the next two years, you've got a lot of training and simulations and uh, learning coming up is if you could pick your first mission though, right now, based on what you know, where would you want to go? What would you want to do and do in orbit? Oh, wow. I'll be honest. I'm so happy to be here. I think I would do whatever they told me with a smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a part of training you're most looking forward to or a part that you see maybe being a little more daunting or maybe a part of it that you think some skills that you've had previously will really help you excel in? Sure. Um, so I have a lot of passion for aviation. I actually have my fixed wing license, helicopter license, instrument rating, et cetera. Um, so I am super excited about the T-38s. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun uh, and good team building opportunity as well. Um, I hear the neutral buoyancy lab can be pretty challenging. So uh, getting to kind of like learn the spacewalking, I'm very excited about that. As you begin this journey as part of what we're calling really this next generation of astronauts, the Artemis generation, um, what would be a message of encouragement to that next generation that, you know, if all goes well with this generation, they could be living and working on the moon and Mars, which is a crazy sentence to say. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Uh, it kind of comes back to um, hopefully when you hear all of our stories, you can kind of see what different paths we took to get here. So it's so important that uh, you seek out your passions, whether or not uh, it's to become an astronaut or whatever it is, right? Um, everyone has a place in space. Absolutely. Couple rapid fire questions from our community. Favorite food that you have to take with you to space? Oh my gosh. I'm not sure they have it yet there. <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep it simple and go with cheese pizza. <laughs> there we go. Favorite TV show or movie? Ooh, you know, if it's sci-fi movie, I like Galaxy Quest. It cracks me up. Yes. First thing you would like to do when you get to space, is there that kind of first thing that you hope to be able to do? I think just taking it all in, looking out the window, it's going to be very um, just awe-inspiring. You know, in the future, we really hope to be cheering you on as you get strapped into a rocket and head off into orbit. 
if you could send a message right now to yourself sitting on that pad with that countdown going, what would you want to say to yourself after you've gone through this journey of training? Oh, I'm just so happy that I stayed the course. You know, I'm very grateful to the mentors that I've had in my life, um, including my family uh, and outside my family and my industries. Um, it's so important to kind of have that good mentors and people that inspire you to always stay the course because truly nothing is impossible. Going through life, what would you say has been the biggest challenge? Like we know you've done a lot with the flying and different things. What was the biggest challenge you faced and how did you really overcome that? Yeah, so I think um, it was not just maybe one singular thing, right? It's kind of life comes down to setting these big goals. Um, it takes a lot of work, right? It, it doesn't happen overnight. So you're looking at a lifetime of effort, uh, you know, working on the oil industry. I actually even spent a year in Canada working on rigs. Um, I was a, a company man, so I got to run the operations. That in, in and of itself was very challenging, but getting to take the – experiences and lessons learned from that fast paced operational environments, I think it really uh, set me up for success to be a value adding team member here in NASA. We know that about 14,000 people applied for this round of the NASA astronaut candidate. What was that selection process like on your end? Was it pretty vague in knowing what was happening or were you kind of pretty informed along the way? And what was the experience like for you? Um, so it was a kind of a long process. Uh, you know, there was a many, uh, great applicants out there. Um, we were basically maybe not too informed in terms of like how the process works in terms of, you know, narrowing it down. I know it takes a lot of effort, uh, on, on their part to kind of get the applicant, uh, look through all the applications. Um, but, uh, there was two rounds of interviews. Um, and then other than that, it was the actual selection phone call. Well, I know you've got a busy morning that you're about halfway through. Uh, nice, bright, and early start with the media. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your time and give you that gift of time of maybe having a couple of minutes not answering questions. Uh, but hopefully we can connect again maybe during your training or when we know you'll complete that candidate process and get your uh, mission selection here. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Zach. I appreciate thank, it. Thank you so much. Good luck with it. Thank you.